You better hold on to your nuts and butts, folks, because it's time for a special Thanksgiving mailbox edition, where I answer your questions about anything. Consider this something to be thankful for. The video begins right after this short break. Before I begin, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Football Head Coach 24. It's an officially licensed game by the NFL Players Association with real players. It's a simulated management game, and it is awesome. Let me show you what it's all about. Now, when I'm starting off, my team isn't very good, so I'm going to go to the store that they have and buy different types of packs of players. They have Mega Elite Gold Packs. Let me open a couple to see what we get. Nice! We got Joey Bosa. Look at all the talent here. Open another one. We got Josh Jacobs, one of the best running backs in the league. Let's go. Matt Prater is one of the best kickers. Jimmy G, my guy. Open another one. Jason Kelsey, Hall of Famer. As an Eagles fan, I love that. But they got other types of packs, too, that you can have. These are called Special Rarity Packs. Let's open a couple of them. I'm going to start off with the Halloween Pack. Get some more defensive help at cornerback. Quality gold. Casey Hayward, he's a stud player. Extremely underrated. Another pack, TOTW, which stands for Team of the Week pack. Buy that. Let's see what we got. More defense. Another cornerback, Mike Hilton. Insanely good player. My team is going to be so stacked. Let's look at my improved roster. Got a bunch of loaded talent now. Offensively, defensively, this team is unbelievable. Like with every roster, you have strengths and weaknesses. And what this game allows you to do is set your offensive and defensive mindsets to your strengths. So I'm going to change my philosophy and my emphasis more to running the ball offensively. You can see 65% run offense. Let's get a game going here. My team, the true prospectors, as you would expect. Starts off, Jimmy Garoppolo hits no Fant for a touchdown. Ridiculous. I'm already up 7-0. Let's go. Then Joe Mixon punches it in. 14-0 already. I haven't even broken a sweat. Let's see. I hope the game result wasn't too bad. Oh, it was. 70-7, dude. That's ridiculous. I destroyed him. Going down low football head coach 24 on your phone right now it's awesome once again it's an officially licensed nfl players association game with real players if you love football you will absolutely love it i guarantee it if tom brady went to the eagles and won a ring instead of with buccaneers how would you feel i would probably feel like putting a shotgun in my mouth and blowing my head off pancake or waffle also love your videos barry you really showed me the horrors of marijuana overdoses you're welcome i would say pancakes are easier to make but i I think at their best waffle is better i don't really eat pancakes waffles anymore because i'm not a fat lard but when i was younger and fatter i would have to give the edge to pancakes just because of their accessibility is the chick-fil-a chicken sandwich even a top three chicken sandwich honest to god i don't know because i've never once had chick-fil-a in my entire life and i'm not joking about that i never have i will say that the best tasting meal i've ever had in my entire life was friendly's chicken quesadilla when i was like nine or ten. First time i, I tasted that thing i literally came in my pants it was so unbelievably good this day still the best tasting food i've ever had was a friendly chicken quesadilla barry do you take time out of your relentlessly busy schedule to play video games i do not i haven't really played video games since i was in high school i grew up on modern warfare call of duty those types of things hours just team deathmatch hardcore team deathmatch killing my own teammates who had microphones so i could hear them bitch and complain so i've been a troll for a while grew up grand theft auto all the Madden games, but eventually, for whatever reason, I just kind of lost interest in it and haven't really touched a video game, probably because I wasn't really good at them, so I don't really care, but now, I mean, if I had known how much money people were going to make playing video games, I probably would have got into it sooner, but it's just not my thing. Will there ever be a triggering NHL fan bases video? I do not think there will be, just because I don't know enough about hockey, because I don't watch hockey to trigger NHL fan bases, and if I tried to, I would probably just be looking up generic shit that people have already been saying for years and years. The reason that my other triggering videos work is because I know about the sport and I know the little intricacies about every team or every superstar that really kind of, you know, tightens screws or... I don't know how to do that with hockey unless I say that basketball is better and a more manly sport. Hey Barry, what are your thoughts on the NFL trying to branch into Europe? Do you think this will help or hurt the NFL? Well, they've been doing this shit for like 16 years now and basically all the games that are played overseas end up being shitty as fuck and there's no real reason to them. I don't see how having a team overseas would work. So the logistics, the semantics of it, I don't I don't really know. It doesn't, it seems like a waste of time to me. It's something that the NFL is just so bored. I think at this point, the NFL is fail-proof, so it wouldn't fail, but I think the NFL is just, it's fine right now. You don't need another team overseas. I'm genuinely curious about if you thought you'd get this far on YouTube and what it's like. Also, maybe if there's something in the future you're planning. Well, I always knew that I had a 
combination of sports knowledge, specifically basketball and football, and a unique sense of humor that people seem to gravitate towards. And that combination, I think, has been pretty consistently productive for me. So I knew that if I stayed at it in terms of my channel and kept producing content, that I would eventually be able to have a pretty big following and a pretty big platform on here. Thing is, is that it's, I don't even feel like I'm anywhere close to where I could be. And there's still so much more things I would like to do. I used to have a podcast. I stopped doing the podcast because it felt like it just was a waste of energy. But I do feel like sometimes with my videos, I'm not able to really fully capture my, my talents, you know, and my comedic timing and things like that. And I've been saying this for years now, but I, I would like to branch out into other categories more. But right now, I'm still not big enough yet. But someday I would certainly love to talk more about movies and, and TV shows and things like that. And maybe bring a podcast back when the time is right. Number one Barry fan here, would you ever consider doing live streams during games so you could interact with your audience and we could hear some reactions in real time? Maybe down the line. I haven't really thought about it um, in too much depth, but right now I have a bunch of sponsors lined up and a bunch of ideas for videos and, and that's really what I'm focused on right now. But how do you work from home without getting distracted? Honestly, I'm really a night owl. So even now making this video, when I'm recording this, I'm recording this at like 1230 in the morning. And that's just how I've always been. Like my circadian rhythm has always been kind of fucked up. So at night, early hours of the morning, nighttime like this, that's really when I narrate and edit a lot of my videos because there's really no distractions. There's less distractions. And I've always been more of a night owl anyway. So I, I just feel more at ease when I'm making videos at night. I feel like I don't have anywhere else to be. There's no pressure to be anywhere else. I can just kind of be myself. And, and so I work at night really to answer your question. What obscure animal would you like to keep as a pet? Wow, obscure animal. I mean, there's a ton of beautiful animals that are really large that could decapitate you with one slice of their paws. Uh, it definitely wouldn't be chimps because chimps can literally tear your face off. Wouldn't be alligators, even though I, I, I love alligators and, and croc. Maybe otters, I guess, but they're a real handful. So I don't really know. I, you know what? Actually, I do. Have, the answer to this, I want a sloth. Sloths, low maintenance. They're hilarious with their mannerisms and their facial expressions. They only take a shit once a week, which is something a lot of people don't know. They go at their own pace. They're hilarious. I would very much enjoy owning a sloth. Barry, what are your favorite performances by an actor? Could be voice acting or traditional acting. I would say the normie answer to this is, well, something like Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight, which was a great performance. I think I don't really care about quality of acting and other stuff, Academy Awards and, and Emmys and things like that as much as other people. But there's a lot of talented actors and actresses who have given a lot of great performances. No, not one really stands out to me, though. I can't say there's one that comes right to mind other than Heath Ledger as the Joker in The Dark Knight. And also Trey Parker and Matt Stone in Team America World Police. Favorite movies? Could we get more movie content? Well, I alluded to the second part of that already in this video saying I would love to branch out more. Unfortunately, as it stands now, a lot of my movie themed videos that I've done really haven't gotten a lot of traction and a lot of traffic and view counts and things like that. So I basically just stick to sports at this point. If I were to get up around half a million subscribers in a couple years, then then maybe I would start to branch out more. But to answer the first part of the question, my favorite movies, I've said it a lot of times over the years, my favorite movie is probably the original Halloween, 1978, at least in terms of horror. And then there's just a bunch, like Robocop is probably the easiest movie to watch. I could watch that movie, the original one, 1987. I could just watch that movie. It just flows so smoothly. I've seen it probably at least a hundred times and it's still good. The Terminator movies, the first the first two, the, the rest of them are pretty much dog shit. And then obviously there's so many comedy movies. Team America, World Police. I would say the most underrated comedy movie, Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo, and Sex Drive. Those are two extremely underrated comedy movies. An underrated horror film that was amazing, Black Christmas, 1974. Check it out if you haven't. If you have time to kill, check it out. You will not regret it. It might actually be a better movie than Halloween, which is something I never thought I would say. Thoughts on Pink Floyd. I'm not really as much into 70s psychedelic drug bands as much as others. So Pink Floyd isn't really my style, but they do have a couple good songs. I think Comfortably Numb is a really good song. Other than that, I'm not really, I don't hate them, don't love them either. I'm just kind of somewhat indifferent about them. What's your opinion on Alan Iverson? Well, AI was a extremely entertaining player who was fun to watch, who I would never want anywhere close to my fucking team if I was actually serious about winning. Extremely inefficient, terrible practice habits. He had that one run to the finals, famously, in 2001. Never again made another conference finals the rest of
rest of his career. Just wasn't a winning player, although his impact tattoos and the cornrows and the arm sleeves and stuff is still undeniable. So I think his impact is one of the, he's had one he's had more impact, I would say, on players and fans than very few other players have ever had. But as a pure basketball player, strictly as a basketball player, I think he gets overrated because he was fun to watch. Do you truly believe the Eagles will get over the hump with their current roster? Well, I mean, we already did get over the hump in 2016. It's not like we're the Vikings and we're still looking for a Super Bowl, right? I don't see why we can't. If you look at all the quarterback injuries this year, well, I should I should go back and say, I don't see why we can't, barring injury, because every single quarterback, it seems, notable quarterback, is getting injured this year. Knock on wood that Jalen Hurts stays healthy. We should have won it last year. You know, giving up that fourth quarter lead was obviously extremely disappointing. And once again, at this point, we're the best team in the league again, so I don't understand why we should not win, barring injury. But I'm an Eagles fan. Outside of 2017, I've been conditioned and gotten used to disappointment. But I just feel like if the Eagles stay healthy, they should win the Super Bowl. That's my opinion. If you had a one-ton block of granite, what would you do with it? I would take it, and then I would try and run up a steep hill with it. And then once I got to the top of the hill, I would drop it and say, wow, now I know how LeBron felt trying to carry those shitty Cavaliers teams to the finals all those years. Who is your favorite historical figure, Barry? Are you trying to get me in trouble here? This is what happens. I'm going to say this. Every year, some athlete or somebody famous gets asked a question like this. And I understand you're not doing it, but it's I always find it funny. Somebody always mentions Hitler and they call him like a great leader and a great general. And I said, you know, if I was ever asked something like that, I would not say Hitler. So I want to point out, no, the answer to this is definitely not Hitler. I think if you look at a guy like Abraham Lincoln, that's a pretty generic question, but it's true. I'm not necessarily a huge history buff, but Lincoln, I would say Andrew Jackson was an extremely entertaining guy. If you read into him, the seventh president of the United States, the entire Kennedy and John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy, all those guys. I'd probably say though Lincoln though. He probably has the most interesting story. Barry, how do you feel about all the quarterback and non-quarterback injuries this year since they've been quite a lot now that Burrow and Andrews are out? I think it's made for really the worst NFL season that I can remember in terms of quality of play, in terms of entertainment. I think quarterbacks are throwing shorter than ever before. This leads to higher completion rates, but also leads to a lot more three and outs, a lot more punts. It just doesn't feel as exciting. And I know people are going to be like, oh, isn't that weird? Like you think this moment Tom Brady leaves, the league gets boring. And of course, correlation does not equal causation. Tom Brady would not help with the entertainment value of the league. Him throwing 65 yard throws a game would have just made it even worse. But I was expecting a more entertaining season than it's been thus far. There's still time to turn it around, but primetime games have been bad. Scoring seems down. There hasn't been that one great season by a quarterback. The MVP still up for grabs. But I will say this, in in recent, you know, last 15, 20 years or so, the Super Bowls have pretty much always been very, very good and entertaining. So I think as long as the Super Bowl ends up being entertaining, no matter who's in it, that will redeem a lot of the misses that we've had this year. If you could erase one player from sports history, would you pick MJ or Tom Brady and why? Also, what would their career be now that they were never famous? The answer here is obviously Tom Brady. I don't have any issue with Michael Jordan and his ability to play basketball. Like, I don't really, like, I, I fucking hate Tom Brady and his fans. So if he ended up just being drafted in the sixth round by the Colts and spent having four or five years of backup behind Peyton, like a Jim Sorge or Curtis Painter, and then flunked out of the league, I absolutely think the last 20 years of history would be way better. If he wasn't quarterback, he probably would have been a, a pyramid scheme guy out in California where he's from. Probably wouldn't have amounted to much. That's what I think would happen. The world would have been a better place if that had happened. What's an obscure TV series that you think needs more attention? Well, this is actually a really good one. I'm not necessarily one to watch a lot of TV shows. I think, though, that The Mentalist, while not obscure, I think was a really, really entertaining show that never really gets mentioned among the best shows ever, but I watched all of it, and I thought it was really, really good. I'm not I'm not saying it's as good as The Wire or Sopranos or Breaking Bad, but it's, it's a really, really good show, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. My wife keeps canceling our dinners together so she can hang out with her boyfriend, and I'm starting to get a little bit suspicious. How should I confront her about my concerns? Sounds to me like you need to be a man and respect her privacy, sir. After Michael Myers, who is your next favorite horror icon? Oh, you know me so well, Mr. Kitty. I don't really have another favorite. I would say the 
most badass, probably Pinhead, especially in the original Hellraiser, when they show up, him and the other Cenobites show up, and he like talks, like, the box, you opened it and we came, like, and it's, it's so fucking badass. And he has so many different lines in that shit, but he's not really in the movie for that long, so, and there's a bunch of sequels and things, but I, I think Pinhead would probably be my second favorite horror villain, just because he's so cool sounding, but yeah, Michael is, is the clear number one. Who do you believe was the greatest football team of all time? Huh. E easily the 2023 Philadelphia Eagles. No doubt about it. But in all seriousness, if you actually look at it, I would say probably, hmm, the 1991 Redskins, 89 49ers, 2007 Patriots, even though they didn't win, 84 49ers, 85 Bears. There's a lot of great teams. If I had to pick based on era adjusted, all that shit, I might go with the 89 49ers just because they completely beat the shit out of everybody in the postseason. Although that team had a lot more close calls in the regular season than people remember. But if I, yeah, but my pick would probably be the 89 49ers. Would you be willing to do an NBA version of weekly reviews? Maybe not every week, like NFL weekly reviews, but like twice a month on all the NBA teams. I wouldn't just because, let's be real, the NBA regular season isn't really taken seriously. And so I feel like it would just be more work for me to do something that a lot of people wouldn't be interested in. I know that I do have diehard NBA fans that follow me, but that's not, most of my fan base is NFL fans. So for a sport like the NBA, whose regular season isn't as important, I don't think it'd be worth time. But if I knew the videos would do great, maybe I'd be more eager to do them, but I have my doubts. What do you think would have happened if Kobe made the finals in 08 versus LeBron, or if Kobe made the finals in 2012 versus the Heat? Well, I think if the Lakers, I don't know if you mean the 09 season, 08, I feel like either way, 08 or 09, the Lakers were a much better team than the Cavs, so I feel like they win those two years. But 2012, LeBron and the Heat would win. They'd beat the Lakers and Kobe. I think in any circumstance, LeBron would outplay Kobe because LeBron was a better player than Kobe was. But sporting cast matters. Do you watch or keep up with the UFC? I don't. I'll watch it every now and then, I guess, whenever there's some major event happening, but I've never really gotten into mixed martial arts or UFC or anything like that. Boxing, never been my thing. And I think a big reason for that has to be that the Rocky Balboa movies spoiled it for me because I felt like that's how every boxing match was going to be where nobody played defense at all and it just seems so boring by comparison so I blame Rocky for not helping me get into martial arts and, and combat sports how would you personally rank the sports of football basketball baseball soccer and hockey I think out of the five soccer would be last hockey would be fourth baseball would be third basketball second and football first although I gotta be honest this year basketball would be number one because the NFL has been really really bad to watch this year a lot of bad plays so and thus far the NBA season it's actually been pretty good pretty competitive on most nights so but normally football is one basketball two baseball three hockey four and soccer five if you are tasked with bringing non-alcoholic drinks to a party what drinks would you bring and why I don't know many non-alcoholic brands I think O'Doul's maybe is the only because my uncles and shit used to drink it at parties I don't know I wouldn't bring if I'm gonna bring alcohol to a party it's gonna be because I'm trying to get fucked up and I'm not even a drinker like I, I, I don't drink very often when I was in college I was a binge drinker but that was something I wasn't relying on alcohol so but if it's time to party that non-alcoholic shits for pussies okay you might as well just throw in Mike's hard lemonade or smearing off ice with your vagina Barry who do you think would win in a fight prime Mike Tyson or prime Muhammad Ali again I'm not a boxing expert but based on what I've seen if you were able to survive Tyson first couple rounds easier said than done you had a really good chance at getting him I would say that my money would be on Ali because of his quickness I've seen and his foot speed and his defense and I think he'd be able to survive that initial storm that Tyson had where he just completely knocked the shit out of clearly inferior fighters in the first 10 seconds or whatever some his ridiculous start to his career where he you know he like was knocking people out in the first round every single time Muhammad Ali is a different animal so I I, I would give it to Ali just because I feel like once Tyson ran out of energy after the first couple rounds Ali would just be toying with but Ali would have to avoid that right hook by Tyson which was deadly hi Barry what's the best NFL game or NBA game you've ever been to in person? Do you go often? Well, as it stands, I've been to one NFL and NBA game each. My NFL game was all the way back in 2004. I went to Lincoln Financial Field to see the Eagles play the Panthers, and the Eagles won that game 30-8. to And the next day, which was a Monday, in school, I got in trouble because I didn't finish my essay on presidential election, or I had to write something about John Kerry or some bullshit like that. But I didn't give a shit. The Eagles won. The one NBA game I've been to 
was in 2012, I was in Miami and I saw the Heat play the Charlotte Bobcats. Yes, the historically terrible 7 and 59 2012 Charlotte Bobcats. They were actually at my hotel that my family and I were staying at for vacation. So I saw some of the players. I didn't see Michael Jordan. So those are the only two games I've ever been in in person. I do not go in person very often. I'm pretty content with just sitting on my ass and eating lunch and stuff when I'm watching on my big TV, watching Red Zone. Maybe down the line, I'll go more. I don't know. Maybe if my fans want me to, I'd be willing to leave my nest. Who do you think has the better young core between the Magic, Pistons, or Rockets? I'd say, well, none of these three. I would say the Thunder easily have the best young core, but you didn't say them. So if I had to choose, I would say the Magic. I think that Franz Wagner is really good. Paolo Bancaro is a scorer, although I don't think he may have been first overall pick worthy. He still seems like he'd be good. Pistons, I don't really see anybody there. Cade Cunningham to me is a bust. The Rockets, none of their guys. I think Sengun is the most underrated player in the league, but they need at least one or two more guys that are consistent. So I would think in terms of consistency, Jalen Suggs, although again, not really worth draft position, he's turning into a respectable role player. I think push comes to shove, I would say the Magic, but really to me, neither of those three teams as currently constructed are winning anything important. But out of those three, I would say Sengun's the best player on any of those three teams and the Rockets should build around him more. Barry, I know you're a Halloween fan. What did you think of the David Gordon Green trilogy? I thought that Halloween 2018 was awesome. One of the best entries in the franchise and Halloween Kills. I got to give it credit. It lived up to its name. There was a lot of people who got killed in that movie, although I thought a lot of it was stupid and it basically became just like a cheap slasher flick. But compared to Halloween ends, Halloween Kills was a fucking Oscar worthy film. Basically, the series was, it was like Ben Simmons' career. It starts out super promising, there's flashes of greatness, and then it just steadily gets worse before it finally bottoms out into shit. I still cannot believe Halloween Ends is a real movie. When I saw that film, and I'm so fucking thankful I didn't go to the theaters to see it, I honestly wanted to throw up. It was that bad. I thought I was getting punked. It was disgusting. So, I would say that Halloween 2018, that was like an A. Halloween Kills was just like a C or C plus and Halloween ends big bat F. Overall, I'd say it was a mediocre trilogy that should have been a lot better. Barry, what's your favorite soccer team? Well, I don't watch soccer, so I guess whichever team has the hottest ladies. If Chris Paul got a ring, which he won't, where would you rank him all time for point guards alone? In terms of these strict positions, I would say Magic would be the only clear one ahead of him. Steph is also better than CP3, but I don't really view Steph as a point guard. So I would say Magic, maybe Oscar. Oscar, but really CP3's career and longevity is pretty insane for a point guard. The only thing he's missing obviously is is the ring. Uh, he's a dirty player though. I would say he's he was real he would really be in the mix for top 2 or 3 if he were to win a ring and to actually play a part in winning that ring, not just being a bench warmer. Can you explain your thoughts on the Beach Boys further? I don't really have any strong thoughts on the Beach Boys, honestly. I just think a couple of their songs really slap. They go hard. Little Saint Nick, wouldn't it be nice that shit goes hard and it's kind of weird because they're viewed as like this buttoned up kind of 60s conservative thing and a lot of their beats still hold up well so so i think they're a better band than i would have originally thought why does everyone sleep on joe gibbs he's a top 10 at least more like three to seven all-time head coach for his first run with the skins even an eagles fan has to acknowledge that right obviously joe gibbs is hall of fame coach i think a lot of the slander for him comes from the fact that two-thirds of his rings came in strike short in season 82 first ring was a nine game season and then 87 there were I think three or four games with scabs and so it was like yeah they won those two years but he had never won in a full season until 1991 where they had one of the most dominant teams ever and they won the Super Bowl so I definitely think that he's one of the best coaches ever but I will say that if you want to poke holes in his resume he only won one ring in a full season which athlete has had the best post-retirement career I would say probably Michael Strahan or something like that. Ironically enough, if you had asked this question in like 1993, and I swear to God, the answer, if you asked this in like 93, would have been OJ Simpson, which is insane to think now, but it's actually true. Because he had like the Naked Gun movies and he had all these endorsements and he was on TV and he was like one of the most beloved athletes in the world. But yeah, as I can think now, probably
probably Michael Strahan. He's like, he transitioned from a Hall of Fame football player into this good morning today. Like, so he has his fucking entire post career. He's had a wildly successful post retirement career. Best yo mama joke. Yo mama's so fat, we're inside her right now. <laughs> How do you feel about spring football leagues, especially the current USFL and XFL? They will never be successful because the talent level isn't there. It's really that simple. I think also a big reason why the NFL is as successful as it is, is because there is that six month break between the end of the Super Bowl and the start of the next season. So it gets people hungry for football again. And the inferior talent and coaching in the spring leagues, it just isn't enough to, it doesn't measure up to the NFL. Even the NFL at its worst, like it's been this year, it's it's still leap years better than any of these spring leagues. So I'm not a fan of them. I don't really watch them. To me, they're a big no-no. What's your current take on the US national debt? Well, I do not support having trillions and trillions of dollars in national debt. I really wish it was as simple as just printing off $3 trillion, which would then create such a massive amount of inflation. It'd be kind of funny, actually, even though it would suck. It's too bad Marilyn Monroe wasn't coming up in this era, because if she was, her OnlyFans would have been enough to pay off the national debt. The money she would be making from that would have been enough to pay off the national debt. This was a chick that was banging JFK and Bobby Kennedy at the same time. She married Joe DeMott. Like, this chick, like, she's the greatest whore of all time. So she would have had enough money to solve the national debt, but unfortunately, just she's not here anymore with us. Barry, please re-upload the Coach Fight Club video. It is your finest work, I beg of you. I honestly wish I hadn't deleted it, but even if I wanted to re-upload it, which I do, I don't have it. I deleted the video like I always do after I upload videos in order to save space on my computer, so I don't have it. So even if I wanted to at this point, I couldn't re-upload it. If anybody does have it saved somewhere, then you can just like DM me on Twitter and let me know. But either way, as of right now, I don't have any power to re-upload it. Will there be an influx of NBA videos as the season starts up again? Well, we're a month or so into the season right now. Uh, I would say that, like usual, once the NFL season ends in mid-February, then the NBA becomes the main sport. You'll see a lot more videos like that then. So there will be more NBA videos down the line. But while the NFL season is going on, most of my videos are going to be NFL related. Favorite Thanksgiving side dish? I guess I would say stuffing. Honestly, I've never been a big fan of Thanksgiving. I never really have been. So I think it's the worst of the three big three holidays. I would say that Halloween's by far the best. And then Christmas. Actually, let me take a step back. I would say that Halloween is the best holiday because it transforms with you as you get older. When you're a kid, you enjoy it because of the candy, right? When you get older, you enjoy it because all the girls come up dressed like sluts and you might have sex, right? So there's different reasons to love it. And candy's still still there too. Thanksgiving, it's one of those, it never really changes. It's just boring and you have to like sit with your relatives and everyone talks politics and it's kind of awkward and whatever. Christmas as a kid is probably the second best holiday, but Christmas gets less fun the older you get because then it becomes, well, I'm not getting gifts anymore. And now I have to get gifts for people. And the gifts you do receive, it's more like, oh great, thanks for the new pair of socks. Thanks for giving me another fucking tape measure for whatever. Like, the, it's not nearly, like, so Christmas, as you get older, becomes way less exciting. I don't know, I just went on a diatribe there. I don't know why, I'm just trying to say what I think. Tom Brady is a stain on life. I don't think there's a question there, but uh, we'll include it because I agree. Best Jason kills in Friday the 13th. Ironically enough, I would say the best kill in the entire franchise was in arguably the worst movie of the franchise. It was early on in the movie Jason X, where Jason is on this board, and they just, like, defreeze them from thousands of years of sleep or something. I don't know. It was such a fucking terrible movie. Anyway, in the scene, he ends up waking up and the chick who's in the lab, who of course happens to be this extremely attractive single blonde chick, she looks back, doesn't see him, and then he takes her head and he like drowns her in like hydrogen cyanide and her face like freezes up and then he takes her frozen face and like slams it against the table and you see all the like these like bloody snowy bits. I thought that was so fucking awesome. So that would get my vote for it. Is Bill Belichick done with the Patriots after this season. Yes, I believe he will be. I've been saying this for a while now. I would not be shocked if he is head coaching the Chargers next year, either the Chargers or Washington. And finally, would the 2018 Cavs have beaten 2018 Rockets if the Rockets made the finals? This is one of my all-time what-if final series because 2018 LeBron's the best player I've ever seen, and that 2018 Rockets team was hindered with CP3. Either way, if this had happened, it would have been a much better outcome than what really happened.
happened, which was the Warriors coasting to another championship. I don't know, man. I, I would not have counted out LeBron. I feel like those super-powered Warriors teams were the only two teams that could have stopped him in those years. And when push comes to shove, I'm putting my money on LeBron over James Harden. So I'm going to say yes. Fuck it. What does it matter? Seriously, what does it matter what I think? We're never going to be able to find out. So I'm going to say yes. That's another ring for LeBron. Another ring that LeBron got screwed out of.